In today's video, I'm going to show you how a simple embossing tool like this one can help improve your art skills, whether you're painting or drawing. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour as well as drawing, a little bit of mixed media, even some business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. Make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So I've got here a couple of different types of embossing tools. I'm going to show you these in a little bit more detail in a moment. Don't worry if you don't have one of these. There are several items that you can just find around your household that you can use to emboss with. So why would you use such a thing? Well, they're great for getting fine detail in paintings and drawings. So it can be really, really time consuming to paint little fine delicate lines with a tiny brush or perhaps to try and you know shade with pencil round a little light area it really takes ages and the results are not always as neat as you would like and this is where an embossing tool comes in they are remarkably versatile i'm going to show you how to use them for pencil for colored pencils watercolor pencils watercolor and acrylics so first let's look at these tools up close and I'll show you some alternatives that you might have in your household already. So what are embossing tools? They're meant actually to dent paper. They're used in all sorts of crafts but they can also be used for fine art. So what you've got essentially, and this is the most, uh, the most common type, I'll hold it here, hopefully you can see it well. What you have is a point that has a little ball on the end. In other words, it's rounded. Now, the little ball is not important, but what is important is that the point that you use is not sharp. I'll show you the other end here. You can buy these as individual tools. You can also get ones like this. They're quite hard to find, actually. I got this in a local art shop where I used to work doing uh, classes and demonstrations. And this one, actually, it's like one of those ballpoint pens you had with multiple colours when you were a kid. I had one anyway. I thought they were the best thing in the world. And you just sort of press these down and you get different points. You can get large points and you can get smaller points. It just depends what's available at the time. I'll try and find some Amazon links and put them in the comments but obviously if you're in a country that you find it hard to get stuff online, if you find it hard to get art materials, there are other alternatives. So alternative number one is nail art tools. So I haven't got any, uh, I always have pretty nails but uh, I haven't got any patterns on them but you do actually, you can buy very cheaply little tools and they come in a selection of sizes and they're exactly the same shape as this. They just have a little metal point. You basically get the, uh, get the stuff and put it on your nails. I would not be neat enough to do that. Somebody else does my nails but those work very well. Another option for you is to use the end of a thin paintbrush like this one. One that's perhaps a little bit more pointed would be helpful. Do just check those because sometimes the paint that's on the outside of the paintbrush can actually come off on your paper, which you don't want. So if you've got an old paintbrush or an old piece of hardwood, what you can do is just sort of get some sandpaper and just take the paint off that and just make sure that it's uh, the correct amount of uh, smoothness on the end. That's another option. Something that works really well actually is a ballpoint pen where the ink has run out. So in the UK, we call these biros. A biro is actually a brand name, but in the UK, all ballpoint pens are biros and all vacuum cleaners are hoovers, regardless of who actually made them. So a ballpoint pen is a great alternative. Of course, make sure that the ink has run out first. Ink is always running out in ballpoint pens, but I guarantee when you actually want one with ink that's run out, you're going to have to wait a little while. You might be wondering if you can use a craft knife for these techniques. To an extent, yes, it's a slightly different technique. I'll probably make another video about that. But in this video, we're going to use these more rounded points. Now, if you haven't used an embossing tool for drawing, for sketching, I'm not exaggerating when I say it's seriously going to change your life. You can get the most amazing fine white lines that you simply can't get by trying to leave a space on your paper or perhaps go in with a white pencil, which never looks very good and never tends to cover. We're gonna solve all of those problems by using our embossing tool. Let me show you how it's done. So what actually happens when you make a dent in your paper? Well, it all depends on the medium you're using. A dry media may skip across the top of the dent, leaving a white mark. A wet media may sometimes go into the dent, leaving a dark mark. So let's go through the mediums. So we're gonna start with this graphite pencil. Just see how you can get some really neat effects when working in pencil. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna 
emboss a line. I'm pressing fairly hard, then I'm going to sketch over the top. Now I don't want to go in the same direction as the line I've made because what could happen then is I could sort of end up just drawing in the dent and we don't want to do that in this case. So what I'm going to do is sketch across like this. Now it can be really hard with pencils to get those fine white lines. Things like hairs and whiskers and grasses really really tricky but look how easy we can get a white line using this so you can imagine if we're doing something like fur and I'm going to go a little bit more sort of sketchy and maybe I'll make some different size marks as well there's a much thinner one there and let's try it again going across the top and look at that look at the natural effect we get there and just because I anticipate some of you are going to ask me what pencil I'm using I think it is a 5b pencil so it's a fairly dark soft pencil and that's going to help to make these lines show up more so are lines the only thing that we can do with an embossing tool not at all so we could do things like spirals imagine how useful this would be on something like a snail shell we can do dots, don't worry if you can't see these, they'll become clear once I put the pencil on the top. We could even do maybe some cross hatching, some squares. So let's have a look at those. And bear in mind that I'm on a watercolour paper here because we're going to be using some paint later on. So on a cartridge paper, that's a smooth sketching paper. We tend to call it cartridge paper in the UK. You'll get even more of a sort of a filled in effect. You're getting a little bit of a, a gappy effect on this paper because it's got a bit more texture to it. But I think you can see the amazing effects we can get with our embossing tool and graphite pencil. At this point in the video, as always, if you're enjoying this video and you're getting some value from it, can I ask you just quickly to press that like button. Also, please do consider subscribing. Lots of you who watch me are not subscribed. It's completely free. And I'm currently trying to get my channel. It's just gone over 70,000. I'm trying to get it up to 100,000. I can't tell you how happy that would make me and I really appreciate your help. If you can like, share, subscribe or leave me a comment, you're helping my channel to grow. So that's a pretty cool technique. What about if we start adding color? We can actually start layering and using the embossing tool to reserve areas of color. You're going to love this effect. So let's look at another effect that we can do. So I'm gonna just sketch a leaf shape here. And what I'm going to do is rather than reserve white, I'm going to try and reserve this yellow. So I'm going to go across my paper first of all with this yellow. Again, remember that on a sketching paper, you'll get a neater effect than this. But because I'm going to be adding water to this paper later, it does need to be watercolour paper. But if you're using coloured pencils or graphite pencils, I suggest that you use a sketch pad paper instead, which is just a little bit smoother. So I've coloured my leaf yellow. What I'm going to do now is get my embossing tool and I'm going to make some leaf veins. So we're going to emboss like this. I'll do quite a lot so that they really show up for you. I'm just drawing them as if I would be drawing with a pencil. You can actually see them slightly, but that's not the only thing that you'll see because what I'm gonna do now is go over the top with a dark green. And what will happen this time is rather than there being white paper left on show, we're going to get the yellow left on show. So look how pretty that is. I mean, obviously given more time and a sharper pencil, shockingly blunt this pencil, isn't it? Given more time, we would go around and neaten the edges up a bit more. But look at the amazing result you can get with this embossing tool. It's far neater than you would ever be able to do if you were just trying to draw round the yellow and leave gaps. And of course, the yellow wouldn't show up particularly well if you went on top of the green, because although it's an opaque medium, it doesn't tend to stick to colors underneath very easily when you layer it. But look at the amazing results we've got using our embossing tool. So far, we've used our embossing tool to sort of highlight light areas 
However, if we use it with watercolour, we're going to get the opposite effect and we can get dark lines. Let me show you how and why this happens. So onto watercolour and continue with our leaf theme. I've uh, drawn a couple of leaves here. Now again, I'm going to emboss just onto the dry paper here. I'm going to emboss our leaf veins. And we're going to put watercolour paint on top. Now the opposite is going to happen. The paint's actually going to go into the dips. And not only that, but the dips are going to attract more pigment than the areas around. So what we should get is little dark veins. Now these are going to be much more natural looking than if we'd painted them with a fine brush or something like masking fluid. So I'm going to apply my paint here. I'm not going to try and avoid those little lines in any way. I've picked quite a dark colour here on purpose so I'm going to put a little bit of water on it and as it dries it will lighten. We should get those little dark veins appearing. I also am going to use my paintbrush in a second, just damp, in order to lift out a highlight. And what we should find is that the highlight lifts out, but some of the pigment remains. In those veins. And you can see there that the pigment is settling into the dips. Now, you can get more of an effect than this by layering over the top, you know, once or twice more. So you can allow it to dry, then put another layer of paint on. And you'll find that the more layers you put on, the more this shows up. It will also depend on the granulation of your paint. Granulating pigments will tend to sit in those little dips a bit more than transparent pigments. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do it the other way around. So rather than emboss first, I'm going to emboss while the paint's wet. So I've got a different color here. So let's go up like this. This is more of a transparent yellow green. If you're wondering what these paints are, they're made by uh, Jackman's Art Materials. And the reason they are in little pots is because they are manufacturer's samples, as I sometimes work with Jackman's designing paint colors. So you can find those on my website. And you can see that we can actually draw into the paint here whilst it's wet. And again, get that impression of the paint going in the dips and these tiny little fine lines. Now, if you are struggling with your watercolour painting at all and you find it hard to get a nice smooth application like this, do have a look at my Beginner's Watercolour Techniques course. It's all about paint application and water levels. It starts you right from the most basic things like flat washes, graduated washes, blended edges and so on and so forth. It takes you right from the very beginning and I currently have a sale on if you are just watching this video a day or two after it's come out. We have an Easter sale on that's on until Monday the 18th. So in other words the end of Easter Monday. That's April 2022. So if you pop into the video description you'll find a link to that course. Now if you're watching this video six months later and you've missed that sale do make sure you're on my mailing list. You can get onto my mailing list by grabbing any of the free Free PDFs in the video description or by popping along to my website and filling in the form on the front page and then you'll get an email newsletter each week and it'll let you know about any discounts and offers that I have coming up and of course new products as well. There's also lots of good value in that newsletter and reminders about recent free YouTube videos and things like that. So you might be asking what about watercolour pencils? They're kind of dry and wet. Do we get dark or light lines? The truth is you can use it for both. So let's think about watercolour pencils. And again, I've got my leaf and I'm embossing here. I'm using quite a wide point on this as well. And what we can do is we can use the watercolour pencil like we did before to leave white lines. Now, if I sketch across the top, before I put any water on. Of course, it's just like using a standard colored pencil, the white lines appear. And you might say to yourself, well, if you're gonna add water, you know, the water can go in the dips, which of course it can. And what's the point really? It's, you know, it's just like drawing around and leaving white gaps. You're not really getting any benefit, but it's actually, once you've put this area on, it's actually much easier to avoid those white gaps than it is if you're just trying to draw around them and they're completely flat. So yes, you still have to be careful. You can't take the brush right the way across. You're still going to need to try and avoid those areas with the brush. 
but you'll actually find it's a lot easier to do that once you've used an embossing tool. You might make the occasional mistake, of course, a little bit of paint might go in the dips like it did just there, but overall you can get really quite a nice effect. And you find that even when the paint does go in the dips, it doesn't go quite as dark. There isn't quite as much water going in as there would be otherwise. So I'm being a little bit more careful now. You need a brush with a fine point, of course. And you see that we can still get quite a good effect there by using the embossing tool rather than just trying to go round and leaving areas of white paper. And yes, if you're wondering, you can layer the colour as well and use that lighter yellow or lighter colour underneath. But we can also, of course, do the second technique and get dark lines. And what I'm gonna do here is put the color on first. I'm going to emboss again. And this time I'm going to allow the color to go in to those gaps. It's quite a subtle effect, but you can see hopefully on camera that there are some little lines appearing. And just like when working in watercolor, there's nothing to stop you going onto wet paper either. Make sure you're on watercolor paper for this, of course. You always want to be on watercolor paper if you're adding any kind of water. So again, if they haven't shown up, I can see them, but they're not as dark as I would like. So again, I can go in and I can start pressing into those areas and getting them a little bit darker. You have to sort of play around with it. Sometimes what you need to do, like our previous example with watercolors, is rinse and dry your brush and sweep out a bit of color. Of course, if you just go really, really dark, you know, you're not gonna see any darker areas because everything is dark. So you might need to just sweep out a bit. Can you see how it's leaving the paint in those little dips, but it's lifted out where I've taken that damp brush across. And you can choose whether you do that all over the leaf or if you just want it to sort of be subtle and in one area so you've got a bit of a highlight there. And again, it's a really effective technique. So we've used our embossing tool to get light lines. We've used it to get dark lines. Now we're going to use it to sort of draw into the paint and get texture. I'm gonna show you with acrylics. This can actually be done also to some extent with watercolor. So I've got some acrylic paint now, and this is actually a technique that acrylic and oil painters often use. They often just use the end of a sharp brush handle and just gonna make almost a sort of a dull green there. And I'm gonna sweep it up as if we're making you know, grasses or something like that. Now this works well on paper. You know, if you're working with acrylics on stretch paper, as I often do, they don't have to go on canvas if you don't want them to, then it works really well to grab one of these embossing points and you can actually sort of almost draw into the paper. Let's put a bit of darker paint on so you can see it as well. And what you're doing here is just adding texture. See how you can get those sort of lighter areas coming through. Really, really good for things like grasses. It can be used for all sorts of things. You could use it to scrape and emboss tree bark, for instance, or animal fur or hair. Now this can be done with watercolor as well, but you'll get a variation of things in watercolor. When you're using a technique like this in watercolor, what will happen is in some areas, you'll almost scrape back to white paper, and in other areas, you'll dent the paper and so the pigment will sit in. So when you do this sort of grass effect with watercolor, you tend to get a variation of light and dark marks. Whereas with the acrylic here, we're almost lifting that dark paint in front and we're showing that lighter paint behind. But of course, it all depends on which colors you use. You can of course use it for oils or for any watercolors where you're using some kind of paste medium. There are lots and lots of different applications for your embossing tool. So do just have a play around you can get some amazing natural looking results. So do let me know in the comments, have you used an embossing tool in your artwork and have you discovered any new uses for one in this video? Now, before you leave this video, do have a look in the video description. I've got all sorts of good stuff down there for you. You can find out all about my courses, my Patreon. I've also got some free downloadable PDFs. There's even a free course you can take. And if you've enjoyed this video, I think you're going to enjoy my top 10 drawing mistakes video. You can watch that one right now.